Good evening, everyone. Uh, firstly, I want to repeat uh, what I said on Sunday in Australia. I understand and share the anger and disappointment of Australian fans and the broader Australian community about the events that unfolded in Cape Town on Saturday. We've held a board meeting today and I want to assure people that the Chairman and other directors of Cricket Australia share these same sentiments. So on behalf of Cricket Australia, I want to apologise to all Australians that these events have taken place and particularly to all the kids who love cricket and idolise the players. I want to also apologise to Cricket South Africa and South African fans that this issue has overshadowed what otherwise should have been a wonderful series. As the Chairman has said in his statement earlier tonight, we recognise that this issue goes beyond the technical nature of offences and various codes of conduct. It's about the integrity and reputation of Australian cricket and Australian sport. Ultimately, it's about whether Australians can feel proud of their national sporting teams. That depends as much on the way players conduct themselves as it does about winning or losing. It's all about how we play the game. Earlier today, I received an update from about the investigation being conducted by our Head of Integrity, Ian Roy. And in conducting his interviews, Ian was also accompanied by two ICC integrity officers. Whilst that investigation is not yet fully complete, uh, preliminary findings have been considered and discussed by the Cricket Australia Board earlier today. The key finding is that prior knowledge of the ball tampering incident was limited to three players, Captain Steve Smith, Vice Captain David Warner and Cameron Bancroft. No other players or support staff had prior knowledge and this includes Darren Lehman who despite inaccurate media reports has not resigned from his position. He will continue to coach the Australian men's team under his current contract. The players involved have officially been reported for breaching Cricket Australia's Code of Conduct under Article 2.3.5. The substance of the offence can be covered by terms, and I uh, paraphrase somewhat from the article, conduct at any time that is contrary to the spirit of the game, unbecoming of a representative, harmful to the interests of the game, or brings the game into disrepute. Once the investigation has concluded in the next 24 hours, sanctions will be announced and will go through the Cricket Australia Code of Conduct process, and I'll come back to that in a moment. All three players who have been reported will leave South Africa tomorrow. Their replacements in the Australian squad for the fourth test here in Johannesburg will be Matthew Renshaw, Glenn Maxwell and Joe Burns. Replacement players will arrive in South Africa over the next 24 hours. Tim Payne has been officially appointed captain of the Australian men's test team. Back to the reporting. In regard to the three players on report, I want to stress that we are contemplating significant sanctions in each case. These sanctions will reflect the gravity with which we view what has occurred and the damage it has done to the standing of Australian cricket. I fully understand the appetite for urgency for more detail. However, urgency must be balanced with due process given the serious implications for all involved. 
In addition to sanctions for individuals, Cricket Australia will take the opportunity to review the conduct and culture of our professional teams. And naturally, this will involve consultation with relevant experts. We'll have more to say about how this will proceed in the coming weeks. A clear focus will be on re-engaging with Australian cricket fans and the Australian public to rebuild respect and pride. I also want to place on record my strong support for the sentiments that ICC CEO David Richardson has expressed about the need to raise standards generally. I agree, agree completely that the ICC and member countries, member boards, including Cricket Australia, need to define more clearly what is expected of players and then enforce the standards in a consistent fashion. And I agree that all member countries, including Cricket Australia, need to show more accountability for their team's conduct. Winning is important, but not at the expense of the laws or the spirit of the game. In conclusion, I understand and share the anger and the disappointment of the Australian cricket family about these events. This is a serious issue and it needs to be dealt with properly and with due diligence. But now as a matter of urgency, we'll complete the process by tomorrow morning and in the next 24 hours, we'll be in a position to announce sanctions. I'm now happy to take questions. We'll go with Chris first.